Hi, we're the Arthur R. Marshall Summer Intern Class of 2013. Hopefully you saw our other video about why we got involved in the environmental field. Now, we'd like to take a minute and share with you some of the experiences of, that we had this summer and things that will really resonate us, with us as we go forward in our future careers. One of the most striking things that I learned this summer was the absurd amount of fresh water that the Lower East Coast of Florida uses every day. Did you know that we use 1,775,000,000 gallons of water every single day? And our demand is steadily increasing with a little under 2 billion projected by 2030? That water is going to have to come from somewhere. Do you know where your tap water comes from? It was most likely surface water in the Everglades. Thinking about this made me realize the immense scale of the Everglades Restoration Project and how important it is for the continued prosperity of South Florida, especially in the face of climate change. So many people turn on the tap and take that little stream of fresh water for granted. Having an unlimited supply of clean fresh water on demand is a luxury many people in this world cannot afford. This internship has made me realize the precariousness of our consumer's lifestyle and has changed the way that I will value fresh water for the rest of my life. I learned so many amazing things with my summer at the Marshall Foundation. For example, did you know the dwarf cypress trees in Everglades National Park, which are about as tall as I am, are about 200 to 300 years old? I didn't know that before I took this internship, and unfortunately I hadn't had the opportunity to spend much time in the Everglades at all. I was amazed at all that I learned in just one summer. Everglades National Park isn't like Yellowstone or Yosemite, with towering cliffs and awe-inspiring vistas. It's a biological wonder, unlike anywhere else in the world. And I didn't really understand that until I learned more about Everglades biology through this internship and our final project. What impressed me the most about the Everglades was how the man-made environment interacts with nature in the greater Everglades. I was amazed at how complex the political, economic, and engineering issues surrounding the Everglades were. I hope to keep the complexity of what I learned about Everglades restoration in mind as I move forward in a conservation career in the future. When I first started this internship, I was all about saving the Everglades because they're a unique ecosystem, you can't find them anywhere else in the world, they're full of beautiful things, and they just should be protected. However, after speaking with so many experts on Everglades restoration and on climate change threats such as sea level rise, I realized that I was kind of missing the bigger picture of what the Everglades is. It's not just an ecosystem that we live next to and that looks pretty. It's an ecosystem that we are actually a part of and that we depend on for our own livelihood and the health of our communities. So to explain a little bit of what I mean by this, if you can imagine, restoring the hydrology in the Everglades would put a lot more water over the wetlands and that allows the water to seep into the ground, into the aquifer, and then that pushes back the saltwater intrusion that has already been threatening the water supplies of all of South Florida. So by restoring the wetlands, it makes our communities more secure. So the connection is, the health of our communities is directly proportional to the health of the ecosystem we depend on. So after I learned all of this, I realized that not many residents in South Florida are aware of the big picture, so there needs to be more community engagement. And it is events like the Sea Level Rights Symposium that we had last week that foster the sort of brainstorming and community interaction necessary in order to come up with sustainable solutions for the future of South Florida. When I was at the symposium, I saw people take in loads and tons of information and start to process it and connect the dots. And this is exactly what I did earlier this summer. So my take home from this internship is that it's not just about an ecosystem. It is about our community and it's about how we live. This is our home and if we want to be here in the future, then we need to take care of it now. Thank you. During the course of this internship, we met a ton of amazing people and we saw some amazing things, but there was one person in particular that just really stood out to me above all else and really impressed me. Back during, I think it was our second week, we spent a weekend down in Key Largo and we spent the day out on Florida Bay learning about how Florida Bay and the Everglades are connected and how they depend on each other. 
And we spent the day also looking at seed grasses and just doing all sorts of good things. And that evening we were going to have a sit down with a author and scientist named Dr. Stuart Pym. Now, Dr. Pym is an ornithologist, so he studies birds, and his main focus is on the Cape Sable Seaside Sparrow. It's an endangered species here in South Florida. And when we sat down and we started to learn about Dr. Pym, he, this is a man that he does uh, research, he does his papers, he travels the world doing different things, and he's just a real activist on many fronts, and just an amazing man. So he was telling us about his work and how he uh, helps to progress the Everglades uh, restoration projects. And what really impressed me about Dr. Pym was when he had done all of his research, produced all his papers, done all, everything, he then took his little one-man battle and he took his fight into the courts. See, he used the stance that whatever was negatively impacting the Everglades would negatively impact this Cape Sable Seaside Sparrow. And because the Cape Sable Seaside Sparrow was an endangered species, it had federal protection, so he could take that fight into the courts and he could stop some of these negative impacts on the Everglades and really make a difference. And that just impressed me so much because that was one man going above and beyond and making a difference that he could recognize and see right before his eyes. So during the course of the summer, we spent a couple months researching and learning about what Everglades restoration could mean in the face of sea level rise, how it'll impact it and what differences it'll make. And then the foundation threw a or hosted a uh, sea level rise symposium where we got to go out and share this message with over 200 visitors who came out to learn about things that day. And we sent everybody away with a whole lot of knowledge and tools and a challenge to go back into their daily lives and do something positive with what they had learned. They could make a difference by just living life differently, how they voted. There was something they could do with it. But even after we had done all that great work, it still resonated that what Dr. Pym does is he does that and then he steps it up one more level and it just made me realize there's always something more you can do. There's one more thing you can step up, you can push, you can innovate and you can find a way to make a difference. And that impressed me so much that it'll just stick with me throughout my career and always tell me that there's one more way I can change and make the world better and I'm just so proud that we got to do this and uh, experience this through the internship. Hello everyone, it's me again. Um, so, before starting this internship, I really thought that I knew what the Everglades was all about. And now, at the end of the internship, I realize how wrong I really was. Um, I had no idea what the Everglades was all about. And I had no idea that the Everglades system was so large and affected so many people and animals and plants um, in South Florida. I didn't realize how many types of birds and mammals and reptiles and plants all resided in the Everglades. Um, this made me realize that if I was so ignorant to what was going on in the Everglades and I live in Florida, how many other people in Florida and even the rest of the world don't know what's going on and how important the Everglades system really is and how rare of an ecosystem it is. So that is why I think organizations like the Arthur Marshall Foundation are so important because they are able to get the word out to the general public who don't know anything about the Everglades so they can realize how important the Everglades is and why it's so important to save.